my source. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Nelson Cole and Karen. Thank you so much. So welcome to the North Hollywood Church Religious Science 945 Celebration of God. And we ask you, if you're here, to please shut off those phones. Thank you very much. And you at home, welcome to our at-home audience, Zoom and Facebook. You know, you all can shut off your phones, too. So. Yeah, why not? All right, let's pray. Hmm. Just take that breath. Right here, right now, that's the breath of God. How grateful we are to stop and recognize one power, one presence, one good, one creator that loved itself so much it loved each and every one of us into creation. We are absolutely one with the one spiritual, mental, physical, emotional, astral beings are absolutely in alignment with the one thing, God the good, God the blessing, God the all that there is. So this service today is absolutely blessed. Something wonderful is happening because we came together to say, yes, God, use me, take me, shape me, mold me, I am yours. And something wonderful is happening. And we bless our beloved Dr. Mark. He is bringing forth a word that strikes our hearts, that lifts our beings, that shifts our lives, that allows healing to happen this day. We are allowing healing to happen in any area of our life this day because we have come together in the united consciousness of God, thank you, thank you, thank you. We bless our tech staff. We bless our musicians. We bless all those who have come together to support this service because God is on the field. God is in charge, and something wonderful is happening. Let us just, in our heart and our mind and our soul, say, yes, yes. The flow is happening. The good is happening. Something magnificent is happening because we are saying, yes, I am, I am, I am. I am. Thank you, beloved Mother, Father, God. I release this word into the law of mind where it is made manifest. And in agreement, we say, so it is. Amen. Amen. I am part of the great mind of God.
God is all I am. Please, let's rise and say the Lord's Prayer. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And join us in singing our congregational song, It's in Every One of Us. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So right now, let's have a seat. We're going to spend a few minutes communing with our inner self. So right here and right now, we're going to meditate for five minutes. So please focus on whatever works for you. God is the love that I am. I am that that I am. Whatever is speaking to your heart right now, let it bubble up inside of you as we are still.
just where we go. Help us to be wise in times when we don't know. Let this be our prayer. When we lose our way, lead us to a place, guide us with your grace, give us faith so we'll be saved. I pray we'll find your light. And hold it in our hearts. Mm -hmm. Stars go out each night. Remind us where you are. Let this be our prayer. When shadows fill our day. with your grace to a place where we'll be saved. A world where pain and sorrow will be ended and every heart that's broken will be Good morning. Good morning. All right, doing church today. We are. Yes, we are. Thank you. Thank you, Nita, so much. So uh, my topic this morning is uh, the good stuff. Um, you know, often in class uh, when I'm teaching, we talk about how God is the good to which there is no opposite. Of course, here uh, in this dimension, uh, it certainly looks like there is an opposite again and again and again. But as we rise higher in consciousness, we come to this place where God is the good to which there is no opposite. So the Sufi uh, poet, the Persian poet Rumi, he wrote these words, and I love this. He says, the grapes of my body can only become wine after the winemaker tramples me. 
So the false self can only be destroyed by love. You know, this false idea of, 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 of who we are and what our life is, it feels to me and has for some time like um, we are in kind of a global dark night as well as a personal dark night. Uh, the dark night is the dark night of the soul. This uh, term comes from uh, John of the Cross, um, who noticed that there is often a point on the journey, and it can happen even more than once, where we start to question everything we believe, everything we think we know, everything we re have relied on. Uh, our complete foundation um, has, is shaken. Um, so to me, it feels like we are um, collectively in a dark night, and uh, probably personally as well. Now, for John of the Cross, his idea of the dark night, uh, the pattern kind of goes like this, that there's death, there's a rebirth, there's a crucifixion, there's a resurrection. There's a death, there's a rebirth, there's a crucifixion, there's a resurrection. Gosh, it just seems like it's been one crucifixion after another lately. Um, but there is a way out. There is a map if we are burning, uh, if we feel like we're burning up in our own experience of the dark night. And it really is nothing that's going to surprise you. It is about being as loving as we can possibly be. It's about being of service. It's about being compassionate. It's about entering as deeply as we possibly can, as we know how, into our own spiritual practice. Because really, ultimately, ultimately, although it looks bad at first, I believe that the dark night is actually a manifestation of divine mercy. You know, where we have been terrified and we have been angry and we have been overwhelmed, we have to use the current overwhelmed to open more to the divine. Mm -hmm. That shift happens in the, in the ferocity of a crisis. And, and I think we're there. I think, I think we are there. So in the dark night, you know, every illusion you have is, is shattered. You know, the illusions we have about ourselves or the world or other people or the nature of God. So it seems to me everything, everything is screaming for healing. Right? That we have to go deep into our own soul and find a way to love that's greater than any love we have known or practiced up until now. See, I think it's, it, there are so many aspects of this that we have to heal our own imbalances and we have to make better choices and we have to heal you know, our own narcissism. See, I want to make my decisions I realize now, at this point in my life, I want to make my decisions, certainly my important decisions in life, from prayer. You know, I want to think about other people as I make those decisions. I want to think about the consequences of the decisions I'm making. Because, you know, science of mind teaches us again and again that we are all one, that we are all connected. So to think that I can do something over here and it's not going to affect other people or other things around, well, that's just silly. Uh, and, and of course, you know, I think that it becomes natural that we start to ask. And this is important as a way to move through. But when was I not considered as deeply as I want to be? You know? uh, I've talked to a lot of women in the last few weeks. I have sought them out and said, tell me what you think. Tell me what's going on with you. Tell me what you are feeling. And so uh, a friend of mine said something that was so um, great. She said, you know, you have to want a child. I mean, really, you have to want a child. She says, because they are going to take all of you. Yeah. And those of you who are parents, you know the truth in this. So I think so. There's, there's, there was that from this woman. And, that, and that, really, um, that really spoke to me. Because everyone I know who has had children say, doesn't matter how old your kids are, you never stop being a parent. You never stop worrying about them. You never stop caring about them, wondering where they are, what they're doing, where they're involved in, who are they, with, on and on and on. So in speaking with other women, a couple of women said to me, this that is happening right now is, is about control. Mm, that's interesting. Some people said to me that they really didn't believe this could happen here. And that's a really, isn't it? Like, wow, OK. And, and I spoke to a number of people who just had an enormous amount of rage, you know? Um, and if I confess, I, I was there too. Um, I was pretty angry. Um, but you know, I've done enough spiritual practice, and I suspect we all have, that if we sit in the rage for a minute and try to quiet ourselves, 
if we start to ask, okay, is there room for anything else here? Where in my mind, in my body, it feels like all I have is rage. Is there room for something else? What else could start to emerge? So, you know, the overturning of Roe versus Wade, I know everybody probably has a different take on this. Um, and it's disturbing, and that is not surprising at all. Um, I mean, and we knew it was coming. Everybody knew there was a, a, a Supreme Court leak there. But I want to say, and I believe that this is in alignment with the science of mind, I think that people's moral decisions are private. You know, um, I don't think the government should be telling us, as in particular right now women, uh, or telling a woman what she can do with her body. We don't... Um, need another thing to be divided over. And that's what this is doing. So I want to tell you um, my take a little bit about this. So years ago, I was working at a church down in Orange County. And, um, and a couple of times in my years there, somebody would call and they'd say, is your church pro-choice or pro-life? And I was a little smart ass, I admit it. And I would say to them, we're pro-God and the individual. And they'd say, what does that mean? And I say, well, we believe, and, and now it was right about 10 seconds into this part that I would lose them. But I would say, we believe in the presence of God, the spirit of God, the intelligence of God is in every person. And that decisions like this should not be taken lightly. And we would encourage you that if this is something where you feel you have a decision to make, we would encourage you to pray and listen and pray and listen and look to uh, sacred texts to see what informs you. You know, depending upon where we look, that is where we are informed, you know? So if we look uh, metaphorically, if we look up, if we look up to God, and I realize that is just a metaphor, though, we will be informed from on high. A higher wisdom will come to us. But if we just look to the world, all we're going to get is more of the world's thinking, right? Um, so I said, we really believe that everyone's situation is different and we could not make a blanket rule about this, that individuals have to pray, what is right for me? Now, I will also say, so that was not a satisfactory answer, clearly, to the people who were calling, you know, because they wanted me to either go in column A or column B, and I was creating this whole other column. Um, and they kept trying to say, so you're pro-choice. And I said, no, that's not what we're pro. We believe that God within the individual if you will dedicate yourself to lowly listening and a life of prayer and meditation on a regular basis, God within everyone already knows what is right for them. And this is what we turn to again and again. This is what our teaching is based on. <sighs> they didn't like that, clearly. I understand. And I understand. I understand they didn't like that. Um, you know, everybody, this is like so many things. You know, everybody could pick up our Constitution, and everybody would read it in different ways. Uh, but we have the freedom, the liberty, to live our lives as we see fit. I believe that that's what's in our Constitution. And so what happens in the bedroom, I think, is nobody's business outside of that bedroom. And of course, you know, we're not talking about crazy situations or sick situations that involve children. I'm talking about adults, OK? That what happens in the bedroom is nobody else's business. And, and what this that we are going through right now is doing is that I feel like it's spreading a lot of fear and it's a lot of pain. And of course, who this is going to hurt if we tell the truth about it, and let's do that because we're in church, this is a good place to talk about the truth, is who this is going to hurt is this is going to hurt people who are already very marginalized. You know, it's going to be really bad for people who are already struggling, you know. I remember an interview some years back with the Dalai Lama. You know, His Holiness the Dalai Lama, he just turned like 87 years old. Isn't that amazing? And he said the biggest, so he, they were asking him about what he felt the biggest problems we face on the planet today are. And they asked different spiritual leaders and they said very different things, which was really interesting to me. But the Dalai Lama's take on this was he said the biggest problem we face today is breaking the cycle of poverty. Because once people are born into the cycle of poverty, it is so difficult for them to lift out of that. Mm -hmm. And I thought, this recent decision seems to me that this is going to bring back those back alley abortions that caused enormous uh, suffering for people. And there are horrific ramifications there. Um, because 
You know, this isn't happening anywhere else in the world. It seems like a good part of the Earth is becoming more open-minded, right? But the U.S. is moving, and I think, in an aggressive and even an oppressive direction because there's lots of fear here, right? And it's not going to stop here. And if we think it is, I think we're really, really kidding ourselves. See, because this is an awakening moment for America and for women, I believe. You no, know, because this has been... I think, on the part of the government, uh, uh, an overreach. Um, the fact that if a woman in some states chooses to have an abortion, that that's a felony now, is, is, is insane to me. It's crazy. I have to say, OK, well, what's next? You know, well, gay rights or trans rights or birth control overall? See, it feels like, I don't, I don't feel like I have like the definitive answer. Of course I don't. But it feels like we as a country, we're listing. You know, like if you've ever been in a boat when it's listing and it feels like, oh, any minute we could just go that way or we could pop back up. You know, but we're sort of in the middle there where we're listing. I think people f are feeling very, very squashed. You know, and, 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 and clearly corporate money holds, um, holds us hostage again and again. We expect people on the outer to be perfect. We have a way we think people should be showing up. Now, what we have to remember in our teaching is that God loves us because of what we are. We are lovable and we are loving. God does not love us because of what we do or because of how we vote. Okay, people make choices. Sometimes we make bad choices. Then we learn from those bad choices, hopefully, and we make better choices. But when we are unhealed, our job is to recognize that and bring that unhealed area to God, right? So if the Christ in us speaks, you know, that loving spirit, the Christ in other people answers, right? But if something from a lesser place within me speaks, something from a lesser place in other people answers. Does this make sense? No. So I guess I would ask myself today, do I have faith in the love that is in other people? Do I have faith in the light that's in other people? Do I have faith in the goodness that is in other people? See, because the light of God in us needs to be expressed. And faith is, I would say today, faith for me is choosing to see the light in other people. I think every situation in our life is an opportunity to get closer to the light. Every single situation. Every, every encounter is an opportunity to move closer into love, loving relationship with other people. You know, how long will it take us to get back to a loving place? Because it feels like we've been getting further and further away from it to me. Um, I was looking at the word hope this week, because that has not always been my favorite word. Um, but, but this was interesting to me, that the Hebrew translation of hope actually isn't like hope, it's more hope to do that hope is more active, right? And so I think the process, um, the process that we are in is actually really important. If I step back enough and, and lift up enough to be able to have some view of it, I think the process that we are in is important, not just the end result. And of course, you know, everybody has an idea about the end result. But what I know is so for all of us is that we can be in the process and we can be civilized, <laughs> We could be loving, we could be peaceful, we could be calm people moving through this process. You know, because people will learn, maybe not today, maybe not from you, maybe not from me, but people, I believe, I believe in the goodness of God in all people, I believe that people will learn. See, because I think the life force the, that, that, that animates our being cannot be destroyed. See, life is more than this physical body, you know, and so to touch this one more time, I would say that I believe that if a soul is going to enter earth, if a soul is going to come and incarnate here, I do not think that that can be stopped. If it doesn't come in one way, that soul will just come in another way. So I do not believe that um, that creates more discord. I, now, I know, and it's probably likely that we all have some disagreement about this. But the mistake we make, and we have been doing this as a country, the mistake we make is to cast people out of our heart. See, so someone is unloving to us, you know, and we build this wall. You know, I've certainly done it. 
You know, but what I realized again and again is that doesn't work. You know, and I, in fact, if I tell the truth, realize that, God, don't I know that by now? That every time I build a wall, I delay healing. Every time I build a wall, I am not allowing spirit to express through me in a greater way. If, we refu if, if we're refusing love, if we're closing our heart, the universe can't get in. You know, and the universe is always, always trying to bless all of us. All of us. I believe that's so. So we teach what you focus on increases. So this, I realize this is a lot. I've talked about a lot, a lot of stuff today. But I, th I think the important thing is what we focus on increases, and it becomes more important the more divided we look that we not cast other people out. Because in the mind of God, we are all one. You know, so the right hand has to care about what the left hand is doing, and the left hand the right, and, and you get all that, okay? <sighs> so I started with this, that God is the good to which there is no opposite. At this level where we are right now, it certainly feels like there's an opposite. But the invitation of science of mind is always for us to do spiritual practice and rise to a higher place in consciousness. In rising to a higher place in consciousness, we are informed you know, we are guided by spirit in a greater way. And although humanly, I do not know. I really don't know what the solution is. I trust with everything within me that God within all of us knows. And that's where we're headed. Let's pray. So, we'll turn, thank you. So we'll turn our attention inward now for a moment, just recognizing that right where we are, the fullness, the allness of God, infinite loving spirit, the intelligence that creates the entire universe out of itself, is right here where we are, that we are emanations of this Most High God. And so in this awareness of our connection with God, I further know and declare that we are all connected with each other on the unseen side of life, that in the mind and in the heart of God, there is only one of us. And so I speak the word for us today, that the good of God is everywhere present, and we have the hearts and minds to see it. And even beyond that, I know for each and every one of us that we look at ourselves and see where we put walls up in front of our heart that keep us from having a little more compassion, a little more understanding, a little more caring for other people. I know that the way out is always the way through. And I know that our healing is everyone's healing. Because like it says in A Course in Miracles, when I am healed, I am not healed alone. So I accept that a healing and a transformation and a revelation is taking place in our country, in the hearts and minds of everyone, 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 because I believe that the Spirit of God within us is greater than any position or any opinion or any way that we say it has to be. God within us is so much greater than all of that. And so we open our hearts and minds to that very living presence right here, right now, so we might be changed at depth that anything within us that holds on to the darkness as opposed to embracing the light, we let that go right now. That we step into love and compassion and peace for all people everywhere. And so I speak this word for all of those people that we love, the ones we hold near and dear, our family members and friends, parents and children, grandchildren. We see them in our mind's eye and we wrap our spiritual arms around them knowing that they are God's perfect child in whom he is well pleased. We know that their needs are met, that healing is happening right where they are, that they are safe and peaceful and loved. We let our prayer be a blessing in the world that we live in. The fact that we come together and pray is perhaps the most important thing we'll do today. Because when ideas are shared, they are strengthened. And so we pray for that which is the best in the American soul to come forward now. For love and compassion and dignity to come forward in every man, woman, and child's life. We bless our church. We bless all churches everywhere, synagogues and temples and mosques and ashrams, all paths to God. And I'm certain that we are blessed by being together today, that there is a raising up for all of us. And we say yes to it. So with a full heart, I release this word into God's perfect law. And so it is. Together we all say, Amen. All right, we'll sing one time together, huh? I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful.
All right, I invite you to hold your gift over your heart and we'll say our statement of giving together. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you very much. Shine the 
Oh my goodness, my goodness, what a magnificent service. Thank you, Dr. Mark. I've been experiencing that rage, and thank you for assuaging it. So uh, thank you, uh, Nelson Cole and Karen Smith. How wonderful. And the beauty that pours forth from this woman. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Nita Whitaker. NitaWhitaker.com. Let your day start with the beauty of that voice. Thank you. Thank you, goddess. Announcements. All right, if it's your first time here, we're so grateful you decided to have this be your place of worship today. Please come by our, our welcome table on the patio. You can pick up a packet. It tells you all kinds of things about our community and the great things that we're doing here. Thank you so much. And um, we, make it, we make it easy for you to make donations to our church. And you know, when you make a donation to this church, you're just not donating to this church. You're just not tithing here. You're tithing to the many places that this church tithes to. So please support us. And it's so easy. There's a QR code on the back of your program. And you can just click on that and, and give a donation. And you know what? I did it. And I'm totally non-tech and like don't understand anything. And it was so easy. So please, you can go ahead and do that. You can also go to nhcrs.org, give, to give to us. We also have prayer with the practitioner available in person and on Zoom. So if you're on Facebook, go to Zoom, and you can have a one-minute miracle on Zoom. Or come forward, you here in person, and a practitioner will uh, set your life up in prayer. Today, our beautiful flowers here, they're in celebration of our beloved friend and practitioner, classmate, Gary Graham, Love Always from Barbara Berge, Dean Reagan, Jean Trebek, Sabrina Johnson, and Sam Ambler. Thank you so much. And this Wednesday, yes, thank you. <laughs> Gary Graham, thank you for your service. Flying high, baby. And this Wednesday, 6.50 meditation, 7 o'clock service with Reverend Sydney Steen, and she's going to share on her topic, marinating in gratitude. <laughs> so, and also today, 1 o'clock on Zoom, we have our beautiful Carol Winokur, who's going to offer grief support. So please join her. And don't, hello, did you see? Did you see out there all those books? Magnificent books, beautiful books, spiritual uh, books that will totally lift and shift your life. So please come out and celebrate and use the book sale today. And it's cheap, baby, cheap. One, two, three bucks, cheap, cheap, cheap. So go get a good book. Um, and we have Chez Ernest, French dinner. Let's join Dr. Mark in a fabulous French dinner. Decadent, yes, I said that. Decadent desserts and wonderful entertainment. It's Friday, July 15th at 7 p.m. on the church patio. Tickets are available online or at the patio at our table out front at, um, for $40 only. So come have a decadent, delightful dinner. Um, hell in the hallway, light at the door. <laughs> <laughs> this is the workshop by our beloved Reverend Sidney Steen. It's Saturday, July 23rd, 10 to 1, only in person. Come on in here, bring a sack lunch, and join and learn how to move gracefully through change into renewed and abundant life. Yes, amen to that. Zoom for virtual patio before and after Sunday and Wednesday services. And we have a Zoom meditation every morning, Monday through Saturday, 7.55 to 8.15 a.m. What a way to start your day. For all things North Hollywood, go to nhcrs.org and you get all the information. You can sign up for weekly news blasts and monthly newsletters and know what's going on. Participate in your community, my beloveds, and peace out.
So please repeat after me. I'm at home in the heart of God. My life is anchored in truth. I can never be separate. I live in the consciousness of peace. I release all fear. I am living love. Amen. Thank you.